So, you know, it's not enough just to do something once. Um, that's why you have a lot of these, um, you know, um, the first few labs, you know, you're creating web pages. Um, so to give you a chance to really see the process from beginning to end um, each time through. So I'm going to create a brand new web page today. And what should it be about? El Nino. All right. Fair enough. It'll be about El Nino. And I don't know anything about it, so I'm going to go to Wikipedia probably, um, which, you know, because the information is on the Internet, it has to be true. So I know that it's reliable. Uh, and we'll build it. First things first. Um, when I go to the computer, I'm going to go, and I'm going to make sure that I can see the file extensions. Now, I'm assuming that most of you have Windows. If you have a Mac, it will be a little bit different. All right? But what you can do is, and again, this depends a little bit on the version of Windows that you have, but in all cases, there will be an option that says folder and search options in, in all versions of Windows. So I will click on that, and under View, I will turn off the option that says Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Again, files have two parts to their name. They have their name, and they have what's called an extension. And the extension uh, follows a period in a file name. <coughs> so if I wrote, created a Word document, for example, and named it Letter, the name of the file would actually be, the full name of the file would actually be letter.docx. If I created a spreadsheet called budget, it would actually be called budget.xlsx. No, xlsx. Something like that. All right? And so on. We're creating HTML documents. So we want our documents to have the name, whatever we choose the name of the file, .html. All right? So, um, we want to make sure that it's at .html because actually, um, HTML pages can end in a .html or they can also end in a .htm. So it's important for us to keep straight what the full name is. That will become important as we start linking pages to each other. And that will become important as we um, start using images. So because of that, um, it's important, I think, for us to get into a good habit. So now when I create the page, I turn off hide extensions for known file types. And then when I look at, when I create a file, you'll see that I'll see the, the, the dot HTML at the end. All right. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, to create this file, I'm going to go into Notepad. It doesn't have to be Notepad. Um, but it should be a simple text editor. All right. If you have a Mac, you can use text edit, but there's some settings that you need to customize. Um, otherwise, it won't understand um, your HTML code exactly correct. You have to make a few tweaks to the preferences to get it to work um, and see the code. There's also any number of, of free applications that you can uh, download that does nice things like color code the tags so you can more easily pick them out and, and so on. Uh, a, a real good one is called the Komodo Editor, K-O-M-O-D-O. -O -O. Um, there's also Notepad++ on Windows and any number of them. So it doesn't matter which one of those you use, but what I don't want you to do for example, is to go into, say, Word and save it as a HTML file. The reason for that is Word does a lot of formatting for you, and you need to learn this from the ground up. All right? So therefore, we want to write the code by hand. We don't want to use a tool like Word or Dreamweaver or something like that to write the code. Okay. So once we do this, then, we're ready to begin. We're in Notepad. And I'll talk about saving it and then bringing it back up in a, in a minute here. But what appears on the top of every single web page? The doc type. Right. This helps the browser understand what it's dealing with. Because there actually has been several versions of HTML. And based on the doc type, the browser knows what version it's dealing with. 
All right, and that's helpful for the browser. Um, HTML, again, has rules to follow. And the better that you follow the rules, the better chance your page is going to look the same on every browser. Interestingly enough, it's not a guarantee, right? Because the people that make browsers are people just like we are, and they make mistakes. However, your best bet for getting a page that works across a bunch, you know, all the browsers is via, um, uh, by following the rules closely. So you put the doc type on the top of the page, that gives the browser a hint, hey, I'm dealing with an HTML5 file. What are some of the other tags that appear on every page? After the doc type. There's the HTML tag. And then the head. One thing I do is as soon as I put in the start tag, I put the end tag. I kind of lied about the HTML tag. And there, I'll put the end tag in. All right. And what's the other tag that appears on every page? Well, both are right, actually. You should have a title, and the title appears in the head section. And you also will have a body tag. So the web page itself is split into two main parts, the head and the body. Right now, the only thing that we've learned to put into the head is the title tag. And the title, remember, appears along the top of the browser's um, window. Anything that appears in this section of the web page the title appears here. Anything that appears in this part of the, the main window of the web page belongs in the body tag. All right, so we're going to create our page about El Nino, and again, in, in, in the interest of time, I'm just going to sort of fly by the seat of my pants and just put some things out here. However, this is where planning would be important. If this was an actual assignment, I would sit down and decide, what do I want to say about El Nino? What are my main sections? I would do an outline just, I would, just like I would do an outline for a term paper. You know, uh, maybe I would put on the top of the page a definition. Then maybe I would have um, the impact on the weather um, or, or examples of, of storms um, caused by El Nino or, or aggravated by El Nino or whatever you want to put it. And then so on down the line. So I would decide on what the content should look like. Uh, I on the discussion forum, I think, in the course introduction, say something to the effect that they're not worried about the tags, they're worried about like coming up with the content of the page. And I can sympathize with you, but learning how to write for the web is an important skill. It's not necessarily the most important skill that I'm teaching, but it is part of what you're learning in this class. Um, and therefore, that's part of the job, to learn about like, ways that you can express information effectively on the web. So yeah, you'll, you'll have to do a little, you know, little writing to write the actual content on your page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the top of the page, I'm going to put an H1 because that's sort of my top level heading. All right. And... El Nino. Definition. History. 
And then I'll put a credits section. Now, <coughs> at this point of our web development skills, our pages are going to look very similar. That is, we haven't learned a lot about CSS yet, so our pages are simply going to look like a list of headings and paragraphs. Just about everyone's page is going to look the same in that way. As we get more advanced in developing web pages, we're going to be able to control the layout to make it look the way that we want it to. When we get to that point, it will be a good idea for us to actually sketch out on a sheet of paper what we want the page to look like. Where do we want our links to appear? Where do we want this to appear, that to appear, and so on? All right. So we'll go uh, as we get later on in the course, and uh, um, you know, before we actually create the web page, we'll actually sketch it out on just a sheet of paper to, to get an idea of how we want it to look before we start coding it. All right. So now I'm going to go to Wikipedia and All right. I'm going to copy this and put it in a paragraph within or underneath definition. Now, a few things to remember that we've talked about before is notice the way that I've formatted this by indenting the title that's in the head, indenting the stuff that's in the body. That is simply to make it more readable for me. All right? The browser doesn't care about that at all. Any spaces that are in your code or extra lines, the browser takes and it turns them into a single space. So it doesn't matter that I have extra things in there. All right? I'm going to I'm going to get rid of some of these funky characters because I want to talk about funky characters my own self. So what I probably would do is I, if I was doing this is I would probably break it down this way. Again, does not matter the fact that the paragraphs on one line or multiple lines. What matters is I find this easier to read, which means if I have to go back and make a change to this page, it's easier for me to make a change to it if the page looks like this. So you format it within the HTML document the way that you think makes it more readable, because more readable means easier to change. Again, you literally could put all of your tags on a single line and have a 2,000 character line with all your tags in them. But the problem then is if you had to insert something in your page, it would be very difficult to go in and figure out what you needed to do. Whereas if it's laid out neatly like this and indented, it's much easier. This also allows me to see and make sure that I have ending tags for all my start tags. All right? So for my start HTML, down there I have my end HTML. For my start body, I have an end body. For my start head, I have an end head, and so on down the line. It also makes sure that I have nested the tags properly. What do I mean by nesting? I mean if a tag starts within a tag, that it ends within a tag. So the H1 starts within the body, and the H1 ends within the body. The H1 doesn't end like in the middle of this paragraph. That would be wrong. 
because it didn't start within that paragraph. So if a tag starts within a tag, it ends within that tag. Any questions on any of that? Proper alignment is, is a good habit to get into because as your web pages become more complex, it's going to be real easy to lose track of like where things are and so on and therefore you're liable to make mistakes nesting or um, and have difficulty where the browser doesn't display the page that the way you want it to. All right. All right, I'm going to go and copy this and include that in a paragraph under history. And again, I'm going to put in breaks for my own purposes to make it more readable because more readable means easier to change. Any of you that are doing software development classes and additional web development classes, the same idea sort of holds there. Whereas focusing on making it easy for you to go back and change your code is critical. So these are good habits to get into. Down here I'm going to put in a list. I'm going to make my credits and right now I only have one item in my credits but I might add more. So I'll make a unordered list again properly nested I my list tag within the list tag or my unordered list tag within that I have the li tag and then I'm going to go and copy this URL now when I go to save this I'm going to go and save this Instead of picking text documents, I'm going to pick all files. And I'll give it a name. All right. So now we can see it on the desktop. And notice we see the extension El Nino dot HTML all right again if you remember at the beginning of class I turned on so that we could see file extensions that way we could be sure that we got the name of the file exactly correct now I can open it up in the browser simply by double clicking it <laughs> time to upgrade my browser all right, and there we go. Now we're seeing it the way the user would see it after we finish and publish our website to a web server. Now remember, and it's an important thing to remember, and I still get people saying about like the notepad file or the web, the browser file or the web page or the notepad file. There's only one file here. All right, there is only one El Nino.html. I'm simply viewing it through two different programs. I'm viewing it through two different programs because I'm working as the developer who's making the code and I'm also looking to see what it's going to look like within a web browser. 
So I am making sure that when I put it out on the internet, after I've completed it, it looks the way that I expect it to. Now notice again, doesn't matter what my breaks are here. The browser figures out what to do, and if I make the browser narrower, it makes the line shorter to get everything in. I saw a couple students, and again, I, I graded the stuff that was turned in as of yesterday, but I saw a couple students put break tags, which are BR tags, in the middle of their paragraphs. That isn't a good idea, because you may get it to line up the way that you want to within a certain size window, but if that window size changes, it's not going to look good. So let the browser do its thing. And you make it smaller, the browser correspondingly makes the line smaller, and makes the paragraph longer. You make it wider, it goes from end to end. Now, there's any number of things you could say about this. You know, you could say, well, what if I don't want the paragraph to go all the way across the screen? What if I want this to be centered in the middle? Like, maybe like this, with a border on each side. That is something that we'll cover when we cover CSS code, cascading style sheets. HTML is about the content of the page and about the logical structure of the page. In other words, what sections that we have our stuff divided into. All right. CSS is about the um, um, appearance and the physical layout of how the page is laid out. Any questions up till here? If we click our link. That takes us to the web page that we were at. All right, couple things I want to do, just in terms of formatting the text. El Nino actually is spelled with an N with an accent over it, not a plain old N, right? So if we wanted to do this correctly, we would try to put the accent over the N. All right? There are a whole set of HTML special characters that we can use whenever we have characters, for example, from another nation's language, or whether we have symbols, for example, like mathematical symbols, or things like the copyright symbol, and, and so on. And so if we Google HTML special characters, We can see that. And we can scroll down. So like, here's some things, um, you know, the registered trademark symbol, the symbol for a euro, copyright symbol. And if we look for and with a tilde over it, or tilde over it, that's how we can get the special character. We simply substitute that little code for the letter. Make sure I get all of these. I'm not sure if it will work in the title or not, but we'll see. It did. Good for us. All right. So now, again, it looks much better. Now, this is a case, it's a small deal, right? Anyone seeing it before the accent was there wouldn't necessarily care too much, but it's not correct. And this is like a little, how do I want to say, this is like a little uh, professionalism boost to, to instead of just approximately make it, make it perfect. Make it, you know, make it as good as you can be. Questions about this? I think I missed one.
I don't know what would have happened if I co copied and pasted. All right. In other words, if I copied and pasted and left that from, from there, I'm thinking it would not work right because, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the, sometimes with, with some um, special characters like this, the browser handles them in an, in an unexpected way. This is sort of your best bet. Now notice what I'm doing. I have the browser open and I have Notepad open. I'm looking at the same file. Again, important to remember. And I'm simply making my change, saving it, and then coming here and hitting refresh. Alright? So, that corrected that one. Now, let's say I go home for the day. Alright? And I'm not quite done with this. But I want to pick back up on it the next day. First of all, do keep in mind that in our labs, the labs, the machines reset themselves at the end of every day. All right. In fact, every time they're rebooted, they reset themselves. So if you need, if you save something on one of the computers upstairs in the lab, you need to take a copy with you. Otherwise, it's going to be gone the next time someone reboots. So, save it on a thumb drive, email it to yourself, whatever you need to do. So I come back and I have this file. If I double click it, it's going to open it in the browser. Well, how do I open it up in Notepad? Well, there's a couple ways, depending on your version of Windows. You could right mouse on it and say open with. And on certain versions of Windows, Notepad will show up there and you can click it and open it up that way. If all else fails, you can open it up this way by going to Notepad and then say File, Open, remembering that you have to switch from text documents to all files. Then it will find whoops, that and you're back to where you can edit it and save it and test it. Any questions about this? <coughs> all right. Couple things that we're going to go over next. Well, we went over special characters. I could, for example, put on the bottom of my page a copyright notice. And I use a special character for copyright. So I see the little C with the circle around it. All right. Next thing I want to talk about are ways of subdividing your... Well, no, we won't do that quite yet. I want to talk about internal links. All right. What do I mean by internal links? I mean links to a section of the page. Many of you have seen like frequently asked question pages. Let's go and pull up an FAQ for something. Top item on the list game FAQs. All right. Notice what we have. This is Wikipedia's frequently asked questions. I click on why owns Wikipedia, and I click to it. Notice what happens. I don't go to another page. I simply jump to another section of the same page. All right. So why will delete it? I click on that, and again, watch the scroll bar. it's going to scroll down and we're going to jump to the page. Why was my article deleted? So the scroll bar jumped and so on. 
This is very common frequently asked questions. Because with frequently asked questions, usually you have a set that it could be quite a list of questions. And then on page, all right? But have to roll through all to get to the answer they're interested in. So you show all the questions, I sort of like a table of contents. And when they jump back, well, we can do something like this as well. All right? And these are called is I'm going to create a page on the top page. I'm going to create a link to them. Now, to hold, you need the name of the web page. Well, in this, you need the name of the set you want to go to. And name, you give it an ID. So I'm going to call it, and I'm going to call it that equals history equals definition. And I could have as many of these things as I want to on my page. But I give them an eye. What's an identification? What's one thing that you know about identification numbers or cards? No two people can have the same Right? I mean, think of your student ID. Whatever your student ID is, you're the only person that has ID here at Lorraine Community College. All right? It would kind of be not very good if two people had the same ID number. Right? Who would get the grades when we turned them in? Who would get the bill? Who would get the degree? You know, it would be very confusing. So I are meant to be unique. And by unique, I mean there's only one thing that has that as an ID. Now, there's a few things, only one. So, that's the only thing on the page I have of definition. That's the only uh, second page that's called history. the list of my sections, right? The order, is it ordered or unordered? Well, it's ordered. I could have done the order. History first and then the, then the definition, all right? I order that makes sense. It's nothing ironclad. It's not of the biggest snowstorms ever uh, caused by El Nino or something like that. name of a section and not a whole new web page. Alright. 